This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you would like to help support this channel and get early access to every video, consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash cityscapes. Hi guys, Cityscapes here, and welcome back to Verville episode 54. On screen right now you can see what we did in the last episode as usual. We made huge progress, finished this whole entry of the Gotthard Valley, the Fleurland area. I'm really satisfied with how it all turned out. I think I really managed to capture the vibe of it all and uh, it wasn't even sorcery, it didn't even take me that long. I mean. We did most of it in only one episode, so it's what I call efficiency. <laughs> I think a lot of it had also to do with uh, the approach to first build the base infrastructure of the whole area and then later on move to the detailing aspect of it all. I'm actually so convinced by this approach that uh, I'm gonna carry on doing it for our next huge project. And yeah, now it's coming, you guessed it already, it's finally the Gotthard Mountain Pass. I've been talking about that for so long. Apparently for over 300 city skylines years, as you can see here. As you probably already have guessed. From the looks of the footage, this is uh, quite old stuff again. It's actually back from February 2021. Now we are at uh, the year 2900 in city skylines or something along those lines. So yeah, what I just said with the approach of first building the, the base infrastructure, then move on to the detailing is only partially true. Because here for this project, it was basically a, a necessity. And uh, before I get into explaining what exactly the idea is for this whole area, let's first appreciate the remnants from episode one, the very first episode of Verville, that you can see here in, in the background. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit sad, but uh, yeah, it's all gonna get demolished completely and make a place for something way, way better. At the time of this recording, I'm currently wrapping up the, the whole project, building it uh, over on Twitch. I streamed almost the whole process of it in, in, in the live streams and you will get to see that uh, footage in the next two or even three episodes. So definitely stay tuned for that and consider following me on, on Twitter to also get to see the complete building process or just wait for me to upload the recorded live streams here on YouTube after I released the actual episode. But I guess it's more fun watching the live stream, so you also can chat with me, ask me questions. Um, I can also show you around certain areas if you wish me to do so. Yeah, there are a lot of benefits when it comes to that. I actually thought uh, you get to see me demolishing the village we built in the first episode right this instant, but uh, it's actually a little bit later on in the timeline, so I'll just continue explaining this whole build now to you. So the Gotthard Pass is a mountain pass in the Alps traversing Gotthard Massif. 
and is connecting northern to southern Switzerland. This legendary route starts in the oldest and Swiss German speaking canton of Uri and ends up in the Italian speaking part of Switzerland in the canton Ticino. It was and still is a major transport axis of Europe, connecting northern Europe to the southern parts. This is just the one transport axis of the EU. It's the Rhine Alpine route that's connecting up Rotterdam in the Netherlands and Genoa in Italy. But this connection is so way older than the European Union, it already dates back to the medieval ages and is sometimes referred to as the king of mountain passes because of its central and strategic location. Back in those days it was such a big hassle to cross this mountain pass and lots of people have died while attempting to do so. That's also the reason why there are so many fairy tales about the Gotthard Pass because people thought like the devil is living inside the cliff walls or something like that. I'm not exactly sure about how the, the stories go but feel free to look them up. Anyway what we are more interested in is the infrastructure in more recent days. And by recent I mean the old Gotthard rail tunnel, which has already been built in 1882. And with uh, 15 kilometers of length, it was back in the day the longest tunnel in the world. It enters the tunnel in Göschenen on the north side, which is at an ele elevation of 1100 meters above sea level, and exits in Airolo on the Ticino side. It was a complete marvel of its time because it slashed travel time by a couple of hours because the Gotthard Pass would continue another 1000 meters up to the mountain top. So you can imagine how revolutionary that was being able to travel so much faster to Ticino and Italy from Switzerland. And around 100 years later in 1980 they opened the highway road tunnel. It also entered in Göschenen in the north and exits in Airolo as well. And then, last but not least, another 36 years later, the Gotthard Base Tunnel was opened in 2016, which is still to this date the longest railway tunnel in the world with a length of 57 km. Feel free to pause the video here real quick and study that little graph, I think it's quite interesting. Now with the new base tunnel, the elevation differences from Zurich to Milano is minimized. This allows now for way longer cargo trains, you don't need that powerful locomotives anymore. Which is actually another super interesting topic, I'm not gonna talk too long about it. But since I'm so into trains, I just briefly want to mention that when the older Gotthard railway line opened, there has been a complete race in building more powerful and larger locomotives to being able to pull more and more trailers up the mountain. This was also the hour of birth of the also famous Swiss crocodile locomotive and even a lot heavier machinery as well. Now I promise we will dive into the building process in a second here, but it's just important for me to, that you get the background information about what exactly I'm building here. It's not just a simple uh, rail line in the mountains somewhere. I really try to capture the essence of this build and would also like you to understand the significance it it had back in the day and still has. So on this map here you can approximately see where the, the railway line goes through. I mean we already built the Art Goldhau station. The, the train goes along the, the lake there to the Flüelen area which we built in the last episode. And then at Erstfeld you can see how the two lines diverge. The old railway line goes up the, the Gotthard valley there in a very curvy fashion, as you can see, passes the stations Gurtnellen, Wassen and finally Göschenen, where it goes to the Gotthard tunnel. And the other line already goes into the tunnel at Erstfeld and all the way to Bodio. As you can see, it's an immense shortcut, especially when you consider that the trains can go 200 km an hour in the tunnel there. But we focus on this area here. The part between Erstfeld and Göschenen. In the case of Werwil, I skipped the station or the village Erstfeld. We only have the Flüelen station, but uh, that, that's good enough to capture the, the vibe of it all. The thing I personally find the most interesting probably are the three helical tunnels. They are needed so the train can actually gain enough height to go all the way up to Göschenen in that uh, quite short distance inside the valley here. 
The first tunnel almost makes a 270 degree turn or even a little bit more. And the other two are also super impressive. They allow you to see the church of Wassen from, well, not from three different sides, but uh, three times. The first time you pass the church below, then on the same height and the final time you are way above the church. Pretty cool if you ask me. And of course we have the highway that goes adjacent to the railway line, but uh, the highway doesn't need the helical tunnels because cars can go a lot steeper than, than trains. Okay, whew, that was uh, the Gotthard in a nutshell for you. Hope I sparked your interest in that a little bit. There are so many cool documentaries on YouTube. Also the, the B1M, if you are into construction videos and so on, made a really cool video recently about the Gotthard base tunnel. And from internal sources at SBB, I heard that the YouTuber Tom Scott actually visited the Gotthard base tunnel as well recently. So uh, I guess uh, you can stay tuned for a video from him about the topic as well. Okay, time to talk about what we are seeing on the screen. So first of all, we are right now building the Boston area with the two helical tunnels and the little church. You can see three times. And you probably also see right now that I don't have network multi-tool yet. It wasn't a thing back then. Also, Railway 2 was non-existent back in the day. But I upgraded the stuff for the cinematics you get to see in the end of the video. So don't be too confused when you see Railway 2. And also the, the highway we're gonna place later on um, was still the CSUR highway. But I also had to replace that guy because it caused so many issues with the latest patch of the game. But also already before it uh, was about time to get rid of it. It was a super outdated mod and since uh, node controller it's not even needed anymore in my opinion. But yeah, let me talk real quick about the building approach for, for this whole thing here. So normally I would say you have the terrain, you have the map and uh, you try to squeeze in the, the railways or the, the highways or whatever uh, where they fit. But this time around I had to adjust the map to the railway line I wanted to build. So this was really fun for a change. I basically just draw the shape of the railway line where approximately I wanted it to go. And I always had to check the inclination of the tracks because they can, under no circumstances, exceed 3%. The steepest part is actually only 2.6% or so, but uh, since it's a game and city skylines, I, uh, I was a little bit more generous. So drawing the railway tracks and then adjusting the height and checking with the network tools if the inclination is correct and then I could start uh, terraforming around the, the place, which in the end makes it look like the, the railway tracks are perfectly embedded in, in the terrain surrounding it. It's, uh, it looks pretty, pretty cool in the end. In this part of the map I also didn't really terraform all that much yet, so you will also get to see me building, quote-unquote, uh, some mountains around the area. And uh, yeah, th that's also the reason why I use those those fat highways here and there to terraform the, the landscape around here. I think I, you even get to see them in the, in the cinematics in the end. I, I forgot to remove some of them, even though this was exactly the reason why I used the highways and not just invisible terraforming networks, so I can actually see them and remove them later on. But uh, yeah, I, I forgot it, unfortunately. But I guess today's episode is anyway a more technical episode and yeah, it's not really about um, the finished aesthetics already because obviously I won't get around to, to detail all that much, even though this, uh, this one uh, canyon, I already placed some grey flame rocks there to, to get an idea of how this whole area could look like eventually in, in the future. Yeah, so uh, just uh, adjust your expectations uh, for the cinematics uh, a little bit, maybe. It's not yet looking all that nice. Yeah, and uh, right now we are working on the Göschenen station. Here I'm moving back to the Flueland area, grabbing the, the customized uh, station platforms and slapping them 
next to the tracks here again in Göschenen. This will uh, be a subject to uh, change definitely in the future because we have platform networks uh, these days, which look a lot better actually. And with a network multi-tool, we can make them perfectly parallel. So this is going to be much nicer than what I eyeballed here. But yeah, this was this would uh, basically be the highest point of the of the railway line here, Göschenen at 1,100 meters above sea level, and therefore also the entrance to the Gotthard Tunnel together with the Gotthard Base Tunnel, which sits way below ground here. Both of those lines are terminating in a big vanilla hub, which sits uh, very, very far below ground at the edge of, of the map. And that station also works as a depot for a lot of uh, rail lines in Verville. It's nicely hidden out of sight, but if you would like to see that, you can check out one of the live streams there I can go into a little bit more uh, detail with uh, all the functionality aspects of Verville. All right, and we are already moving to the highway built up the mountain here. As you can see, I'm still using CSUR in the time lapse, but as I said for the cinematics, uh, it's uh, it's gonna change. I switch to the European highways, I think they are called. They also look fantastic i'm really glad with the, that choice oh wow and look at that i also have network multi-tool now yeah it's because it's uh, a lot newer footage i'm using here again i try to incorporate some some nice elements to the highway for instance i, I really wanted to have a highway bridge crossing this canyon here added some extra tunnels here and there for instance, right now I decided that I wanna, wanted to see the highway in this little spot again to make a, a shed tunnel later on. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm quite uh, happy that I removed CSUR because it's such a pain to use, especially in the in the mountainous areas. Because a lot of the segments are not terrain conforming, so you have to slap a terrain conforming network underneath the highway as well so I wasn't uh, too sad seeing this whole uh, CSUR pack go it was just really time intense to replace it in, in the whole map actually as of today I'm still not completely finished replacing all the intersections I mean I replaced them but uh, I, I didn't get around to beautifying the, those interchanges could be a task for another live stream I guess. Here you can again see how, how I use those other highway networks to, to terraform the, the whole area. On the left side here I wanted to have, or upper side right now, an only slightly incli inclined area so it, sh it still shows the, the grass texture from the map so later on we can make some, some farming fields or something for cattle or... No, I'm not quite sure yet to be honest. Guys, we are already at the end of today's episode. I really hope it was interesting for you to get to know a bit more about the Gotthard. This uh, thing has some kind of special place in my heart, I guess. I want to thank my six patrons, Rake, Molovo, Dominic, Toby, Rene and Connor. Thank you so much for your support, it really means a lot to me. And if you would like to see those uh, episodes as soon as I finished editing them, and also want to support my work, consider becoming a Patreon too. But also just a big thank to each and everyone just watching the episode. Consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also join my Discord server to just uh, chat a bit and see some screenshots, but those are also visible on my Instagram. And I'm really looking forward to see you in the next one.